David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids. And we're reviewing a recent test. And this first problem that we're going to look at is about bending stress and the flexure formula. And actually, it's combined bending, bending about more than one axis. And so the key to these things is breaking them into parts pieces and looking at them one piece at a time and analyzing it that way. Okay, so I always recommend whenever you see bending stress in the flexure formula or whatever the top problem is titled, you go to the equation sheet and you dig out the equations that apply to that. So the flexure formula is this basic form, you kind of have two of them, of sigma, which is a normal stress, is my over i. And we've talked about it specifically on the equation sheet. There's a negative in front of it, which agrees with the sign convention. But the sign convention is, I find, pretty difficult to follow. So I recommend just developing quadrants and deciding if I have compression or tension in a certain quadrant or a certain half above and below or to the left and the right of the neutral axis. So furthermore, we've talked about it. We also say that uh, if I have moment about the x-axis, then I'm talking about the y distance is some distance. It doesn't have to be in the y direction. It happens to be for that for mx. But it's mx times the distance from the x-axis perpendicular, which I call y perpendicular, divided by ix. And if I have y at moment, my, then I'm using that y perpendicular distance to the y-axis, is that distance number, and it's iy, and that gives me sigma y. So I've well, kind of got, gathered our thoughts, and now let's look at the problem. Okay, I've got a square beam, it's 4 by 4, 4 inches square, point A is in the top corner, point B is at the bottom in the middle, at the fixed support over here. So, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I end up having to figure out the normal bending stresses at those two points. And so, like I said, we're going to divide it into two parts and analyze it that way. The straight line load, further told in the instructions, acts at the center of the end of the beam in the XY plane. Okay, that's this load here, this 29 kip load in this case. And I've got a slope diagram there to tell how it's uh, components. And I should note also that the z-axis is coming out of the end of the, uh, the beam. So that would be the z-axis. So this is first a statics problem. Determine the moment at the support. So I could draw, if it helps me, visualize, visualize an, an x and a y-axis. That would be the y-axis. That would be the x-axis. And I'm going to sum moments about that end. So one of the first steps in a statics problem, which is basically what I have here, is to get everything into Cartesian form. And so I want to look at the slope diagram and uh, divide the 29 kips up into its components. I would have a force in the x-direction. This, this slope diagram is 20, 21. Square those, take the square root, I get 29. Convenient. So it makes the numbers nice and e easy to deal with. So the fx is the 21, the horizontal. And fy is the vertical, that 20. Okay, sometimes these three-dimensional problems are hard to visualize, and I always recommend breaking them down into two-dimensional problems, if you can, to simplify the analysis. So the first step I would say is, let's look at it from the side. So if I look at the side view over here, well, I'm not going to see the x-axis. The x-axis is coming right at me, so all I can see is the y and the z. So I have this little diagram 
two-dimensional free body diagram that looks like this. And I've got fixity over here. And what I'm interested in is the moment. So I'm going to assume it like that. Because that looks like the direction it will be going. And that is, here's the x-axis coming out of the board at me. Out of the screen. And then I have this FY force, this 20 kips up. So you can see it's a pretty simple problem. The span is 2.5 feet, or I want to get everything into inches, so it's 30 inches. So this is a x-axis moment. I'll draw the, um, put a little blue dot for the x-axis. The y-axis is going up. The z-axis is this one going down the length of it. So mx is just equal to force times distance perpendicular distance. So the force is 20 kips, the distance is 30 inches, and so I get 600 inch kips. Kind of squinch it in right there. Then I want to do the same thing and I want to look down on this thing from the top view and figure out what what turns out to be MY. So if I look down on this thing from the top, then I'm going to have a free body that looks like this. Now I'm looking down on it. So now I can see the x-axis going like that. And the z-axis is still that longitudinal axis going down the length of the beam. And now what I can see is the fx force of the 21 kips as I look down on it from above. It's still 30 inches long, 30 inch long cantilever, and now I've got, I can see just by looking at it, I'm going to have a reaction moment. Now the y-axis is coming out of the page at me, and this is an my. And once again, it's just force times perpendicular distance, or 21 times 30, 630 inch kips. So now I've done a statics analysis and I know my moments. I want to transfer them to the cross section, which will help me. Or I could just look at this thing, look at these top view and side view drawings. And I can see that MX, remember I'm looking from the side, is going to put compression on the top. It's pushing on the top part of the beam. So I have sigma X is negative on the top which by our sign convention would be a positive moment, but that doesn't matter. We're just trying to determine where do I have tension and where do I have compression due to the moment. It's pushing on the top part of the beam. It's pulling away from the bottom part of the beam, which means tension on the bottom. Similarly, looking down on it from this top view, I can see that MY is creating compression on the right side of the beam, and tension on the left side of the beam as I look at it from the end. So this is going to be negative sigma on sigma y on the right, on the right side. Then I can transfer those moments down here to the cross section. And I said my, which I would show as a vector like that, and that would create compression MY 630 inch kips creating compression on the right side. Furthermore, MX creates compression on the top, so by the right hand rule, the vector would point to the left and it would have a direction of rotation that way, creating compression on the top. So, MX is 600 inch kips. Now I like to divide this thing into quadrants with the two axes, X and Y, dividing it into quadrants and then write what the uh, stresses are going to be. So let me do that in green. 
Okay, due to MY, just start off with that one, I've got compression, negative sigma Y on this side, and I've got positive, or tension, sigma Y on the left side. Due to MX, I have negative, or compression, due to sigma X on the top, and I have positive, sigma X on the bottom, because it's pulling away. So now I've just kind of analyzed the moments and the stresses that they put on the sides or the tops of the top and bottom of the beam. And I've got all my thoughts organized like that. Now, I go back to my equation, which is my over i. I need i, moment of inertia, about those two axes. Okay, this is a square. So ix is going to be equal to iy because the dimensions are the same, and it's bh cubed over 12. 4 times 4 cubed divided by 12 is 21.33 inches to the fourth. In all cases, I'm dealing with points on the extreme fiber, as we call it, of the cross-section. So, for point B, the perpendicular distance from the neutral axis, when I've got moment about the x-axis, that's y perpendicular. And it's equal to 2 inches. Same thing with A. Its distance from the x-axis is this dimension right here. And it's going to be equal to the same 2 inches. When I'm dealing with bending about the y-axis for point A, that's the perpendicular distance from the y-axis. And although it's an x distance, I would call it y perpendicular is, once again, 2 inches. So the whole thing's symmetric and equal in all directions. As long as the y, the perpendicular distance from each axis is the same, 2 inches, because they're both on the extreme fiber. So now I've got all the input I need. I can figure sigma x is equal to mx times that perpendicular distance divided by ix. And so the numbers are mx is 600 times 2 inches perpendicular distance divided by 21.33. My units are kip inches on the top times inches divided by inches to the fourth so I'm going to get kips per square inch, which is what I want for a stress. And the number works out to be 56.25. And as I just said, my units are kips per square inch, KSI. Sigma Y can be calculated the same way, just MY times that perpendicular distance, which happens to be an X distance, but I just think of it as a perpendicular distance divided by IY. So MX is 630 times that same perpendicular distance of 2 divided by the same moment of inertia, 21.33. Units are all the same. This number works out to be 59.06 KSI. So now I've got all the input for my numbers and I can just look at the points and where they're located and determine which, by the quadrant system, which stress to put on them, and how to add them algebraically. So the first one, is number 15, the problem is numbered, says determine the normal bending stress at point B and indicate magnitude and tension or compression. So point B, if I look at it, is located on the y-axis. So my creates the moment about the y-axis. B is on the neutral axis. There is no stress due to sigma y. So I make a little note to myself. Sigma y at B equals zero. At sigma x, it's located on the bottom side where I've got positive sigma x. So I've got positive sigma x. The number from this calculation over here is 56.25. So I've got 56.25 positive 
from sigma x and 0 from sigma y. I add those two up, which is stupid, but 56.25 KSI, that's the answer in its tension. Report that answer. Tension. Okay, I hope you can see where I'm going now. If I want to figure the stress at point A, same thing. Now I look at my diagram and I see that at point A, I've got positive sigma y, this number right here, and I've got negative sigma x, this number right here. So at point A, I've got positive sigma y, and I've got negative sigma x. Positive sigma y is 59.06 from this analysis up here. Sigma x is negative, it's negative 56.25. I can add those two things up and I get 2.81 positive. My units are all KSI. That's tension, so I'll report that answer. 2.81 KSI tension.